Welcome to Reviver Channel. In this place, we practice the Word of God. We encourage you to kindly sit tight, listen to the undiluted, life-transforming messages and prayers from God's servant. Don't forget to like this video. Please share this video, drop your comments, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Turn on the notification bell as well for new content when being uploaded. Stay blessed. Thank you. Number one, you are God's best. Number two, you can do whatever God says to do now. Number three, you are the hope that the world is waiting for. It is not an apostle coming from anywhere. It's not about going to a mountain first. It's not about a tongue exercise first. It's not about a long fasting. It is first of all you realizing now and today that you are God's special creation. And everything God wants to do, he wants to do with you today and now. And if there is anything God will do in this nation tomorrow, it's because you will rise today. If those things don't happen, everything we say, you will hear it, you will jump, you will shout, but you will never become it. Because the chain of the mind comes to disqualify you. This is why we meditate on scripture. We don't meditate on scripture so that we can quote. We don't meditate on scripture so that we we'll have many rema. We meditate on scripture so that our, our mental faculty can be reconstructed. Because the scriptures come to give you illumination. The scriptures come to redefine yourself to you because you don't know yourself. You thought you were poor because that is the story your family told you. You thought you were sick because that's the story your environment told you. You thought you were defeated because that's the story your circumstances told you. But when you look into the scripture, the scripture will tell you, first, you are not primarily from your family. That you came from the family of God. When you look into the scripture, the scripture will tell you, you are not what your environment calls you. There is another name that your designer called you. And until you begin to walk in that name, messages will only come to excite you. If I begin to talk about mystical things now, everybody will be shouting. But how will it profit you if you don't first of all realize that today and now you are God's choice? How can it profit you? You know it's a transition conference and I say I want to lay foundation. How can it profit you if you think the hope of Ghana will come from somewhere else and not you? How can it profit you if you think revival will come from somewhere else and not you? How can it profit you if you think the solution we are looking for is in another place and not with you? No man transits except as there is a mental shift. And the mental shift begins from you discovering who God says you are. And when you discover who God says you are, you take it the way God says it. Your job is to believe it. God's job is to perform it. And I will tell you, you will battle this thing until it becomes real. Four days ago or five days ago, I went to preach about divine health. And I spoke some very powerful words. So powerful that if you heard it, you would think I was arrogant. Just professing and releasing my faith. And when I went back home, I just took off my dress to go take a shower. And instantly, there was a paralyzing pain that hit me from my backbone down to my waist. I couldn't even bend down. And the moment the pain hit me, fear hit my heart. Because the devil will open all of those channels for you to give allowance to it if your mind has not been doctored. You know, he said, give no place to the devil. Fear hit my heart. What would I have said? Is this paralysis? He was waiting for me to accommodate it. And instantly, because my mind had been prepared for battle, it is not about a message we preach from the altar. It's a life we live because as you begin, you will discover that this is warfare. You will live here today and say, I am the hope of Ghana. And suddenly, calamity will come from everywhere. The idea is because they want to stop you from thinking like that. Because the moment you begin to think like that, you begin to generate power. The spirits know it. That it's according to what you think before what you say. So they will never let you think what you ought to think. They would accept it when you hail somebody. They will accept it when you look up to somebody. But the moment you want to look within 
and say the answer is here they begin to fight you and i would have become paralyzed the pain struck me i couldn't bend and instantly i said no we don't force it we don't force it i said no we don't force it let no one in zion say i'm sick i can't be sick i started fighting it from the mind the pain was in my back but my solution began from my head a lot of believers don't know it they think paradigm shift is about coming to release power laying hands on them if nothing happens to your mind there'll be problem no matter the impartation you receive you will go back to where you came from it has to begin from here we don't fall sick see what you baby believers do when you talk like that they are waiting for something to go wrong and when something goes wrong they'll say mm -hmm. we said it they were arrogant people they were arrogant people i told myself i have told myself again and again that i can't be involved in an accident even if the devil plants it something will shift it away i've told myself see there are things i believe right now for me to fail i have to go back and meditate for at least two years to be able to believe i will fail i'm telling you i you have to retrain me to believe that i can fail as i'm talking to you now if i want the power of god to start moving i can make it happen now not because an angel will enter this beauty i have come to know that i carry so much power that any time i want to release it i can release it any time i will literally contain myself that's how paradigm shift begins sometimes you lock yourself in your room we call it contemplation there is something it does for you when you begin to contemplate on the word of god as you contemplate you begin to generate pictures when you read the story of David, see what you will do. Remove David from the Bible and put yourself there. That's, why, that's how we do contemplation. When you read the story of Paul the Apostle, remove Paul the Apostle from the Bible, put yourself there. He said handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Paul. And when they touched the sick, the sick were healed. When you are reading it, quietly and honorably, respectfully remove Paul from there. And put yourself in that place. Think on it. Meditate on it. Until you see yourself. Handkerchiefs being carried from you. And they begin to cast out demons. That is what Christianity is about. It's not to read it and come to quote it. The scriptures you have been quoting. How many of them have changed your life? They told you David came before Goliath. The giant of God. He was nine feet tall. He had six toes and six fingers. And when he showed up. The young man was not afraid. And then you remove David from there, you put yourself there. You will be, your heart will break. If you are able to picture Goliath first. So when you are studying the Bible, don't be in a rush. I'm coming to teach you. These are powerful spiritual principles. When you are reading the story of Goliath, take time to understand the specifications of Goliath and create that mental picture in your head. And then take time to create your own picture and put yourself before Goliath. You will see that he is three times taller than you. Don't rush. Look at his five, six fingers. Look at his six toes. And see Goliath shouting. And see the way the army of Israel was fidgeting. A whole army was afraid before one man. And then a little boy shows up with the right mindset. And then he stood. How was he not intimidated? How can you stand before a man three times taller than you? And you are not intimidated. You will put yourself there. It may take three days for that scripture to enter you. Because you can't imagine it. But when you do it again and again, a day will come. Any scripture you read, you enter there. And after a while, you will discover this is not a mental thing at all. Because your mind is a gateway to reality. When you meditate, a point will come. You will now discover that you will begin to literally travel to those places. The first person I heard it from was Pastor Chris. He said most of the scriptures he saw he has gone there what i said is this how this works i will carry a scripture and then you see that jesus came a woman was bent over and he stood i'm imagining how he stood ought not this woman being the daughter of abraham who has been bound these 18 years to be set free woman thou art loose i'll say thank you jesus christ i will remove jesus from the scripture and i'll put myself there and then i will find myself standing before a woman who was bent over and i will say the same thing jesus said see when we come out and you see us walking 
It's not an act for the stage. It's the pictures we have seen in the spirit. So when we come out, we play it out. When we are going to lay hands on people, sometimes we stand, we stretch our hand. We have seen this thing in our mind a thousand and one times. And when we play it out, it must work. That's where paradigm begins from. You want to be a politician and you are looking for who to follow. No, that's not where to start. First of all, take time to look. Go and search on Google and see what the office of your president looks like. And when you see that office, put the picture on your head. Come and sit at home. And for two weeks, see yourself sitting in that chair. That's transition. See yourself sitting in that chair. When you sit there for a long time, a point will come. You will now travel there. You must go there first in your mind. If these things don't happen, the impartations will be a waste. I can talk to you from my reality. The power of God will hit on people here. But you may never transit. You see yourself as an evangelist. God told me I will function like Renhard Bonke. I paid my last cash to go to his last crusade in Lagos. I just wanted to watch how the man ministers. I just wanted to see what he does. And then when I sit down, every day, I'm seeing myself come for a meeting. A stadium was packed. A stadium is packed. I will see myself in my mind. I'm coming for the meeting. There's no place to enter. They are smuggling me into the meeting. They don't have a space. Sometimes I see myself being landed in the meeting on a chopper. And I'm creating these images. I'm creating these images. I'm seeing myself saying the name of Jesus and 10 cripples stand up. And I'm painting this picture. As I'm painting this picture, I'm generating power. And gradually it's happening. Gradually it's happening. Do you think you just came here to fill this auditorium by chance? I saw you many years ago. It didn't happen today. That's why when I walked in, I was not surprised. I saw you many years ago. How did God give Abraham a child? In Genesis 15 from verse 5 to 6, he said God wanted him to be a father of many nations, but the man couldn't see it. So God had to take him out and showed him the stars. He said, if you can number this, so shall thy seed be. And the Bible said for the first time, Abraham believed God. And it was counted to him for righteousness. You come to church. There are 10 people and you are offended. No. Don't be offended. There are 10 people. All those empty seats. When you are praying. You are seeing people fill those seats. You are seeing overflows. And then you are seeing that the hall is not enough. You are creating those pictures. That's how God works. He said in the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. And he said the earth was void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Bible said the spirit of God was hovering upon the face of the deep. What was God doing? We call it incubation. God was picturing what he wanted to create. Because if you can't see it, you can't have it. Transitions begin with paradigm shift of the mind. And the way you move your mind is to create those pictures. It doesn't cost anything to create the picture. You may be an evangelist. Every day you sit down. You see yourself commanding cripples, they are walking. Never see yourself in an auditorium. You have limited your destiny. When you see yourself as an evangelist, see yourself in stadiums and don't even see Ghana. When you are seeing yourself in a stadium, be seen O2 Arena in London. Be seen Punjab, Pakistan. Be seen India. After a while, the doors of those nations will open. You will find yourself the day you come there. Only you and the Holy Ghost will be smiling. People will not understand what is happening. The reason is because you have been there a thousand and one times. This is how transitions take place. Too many times we allow death in our minds. Because that time you thought failure, you actually took a capsule of death. That time you thought evil, you actually took a capsule of death. That time you thought defeat, you swallowed a capsule of death. Every time you see anything that is not consistent with what you want, remove it from your mind. Don't leave it. It will grow into a tree. That's why I said casting down imaginations. Don't leave them. You will think you are just thinking. You are not just thinking. You were created in the image of a creator. And so everything you think can become created. So he said casting down imaginations. And every high standing philosophy of the mind that upholds 
itself above the knowledge of God. Never accept defeat. If somebody tells you refuse it, they can call it arrogance. That's their business. You are securing your future. Don't allow people get you to a tight corner in your mind. It begins from the mind. He said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. How come you say you are a footballer and you have never seen yourself playing with Messi? You are seeing yourself playing with Black Stars of Ghana. You will remain in Ghana. When you are thinking, find yourself playing with Messi and be angry with Ronaldo that he didn't give you the pass. In your mind, in your mind, you are offended at Ronaldo. Why did you give me the pass? And then you, you, ah, you don't know how God operates. See, the people in the demonic world know. Why do you think the devil keep puncturing evil thoughts in your head? Why do you think the devil keep bringing negative thoughts? Because the devil knows you were created in the image of a creator. And he knows creation begins from the mind. So if he puts it there, after a while you will create it. And so instead of waiting for the devil to put a thought, you plant it yourself. I'm a footballer. If I were to have one ambition of being a footballer, I would have played with every star in my head. And if I'm playing with Ronaldo, I will score more than him. Because it's in my head. I'm telling you. See the ministry. Where, why do you think many people are struggling in ministry? Because they are thinking struggle. They tell you they can't pay this bill. And you go and lie down. You are crying. No. You can't pay these bills. You tell yourself, we are about to leave this auditorium. It's too small for us. It's too small. It's too small. That's why we can't be here anymore. You say you are hoping to be a healing evangelist and you have not raised people in your mind. Who told you you will ever raise them in the natural? You have not opened deaf ears in your mind. You have not opened blind eyes in your mind. And you are thinking you will ever raise the dead. It will never happen. Because your reality begins from your mind. That's why God put it there. You are a businessman. You are still seeing yourself in one shop. It begins here. As a man, think it in his mind. So is There are many things I will teach you tomorrow. But I'm, these are basic foundation. And I'm keeping it basic so you can understand it. The reason you have the Bible is to help you think. Is to help you create pictures. That's why they wrote stories there. They didn't write, write stories for you to talk about them. They wrote those stories so you can put yourself there too. Because if God did it with one, he can do it with you. He sent his word to Jacob, enlightened upon Israel. The things that were written aforetime, they were written for our learning. So that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. I'm not just reading about Paul to talk about Paul. I'm not reading about Peter to talk about Peter. When I read Paul, I become Paul. When I read Peter, I become Peter. When I read Jesus, I become Jesus. I'm not a theologian. I'm trying to enter an experience. And they are showing me those who walked in it. So that I can believe. You are not ordinary. Paul was speaking in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. He said, according as it is written, they believe and have spoken. He said, we having the same spirit of faith we believe and therefore we speak what was Paul saying if Daniel can prophesy I can also prophesy if Jesus raised the dead I will also raise the dead because if he didn't want me to do it there wouldn't have been need to write it down the Holy Ghost would have told me everything but they wrote it so what you will do after this conference you will carry the picture the scripture and you start painting pictures in your mind when you want to prophesy you go into Isaiah. When you want to prophesy, you go into Ezekiel. Ezekiel will tell you, I, oh my God. He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I saw, ah, you saw. You too, you close your eye and you begin to see. You saw. If you see after a while, that thing will come there. That's why he wrote it for you. If we don't know these things, Conferences will become religious exercises. You will come, a man will manifest, and you will talk about it. How about you? Elohim Adonai. Elohim. 
Elohim Adonai. Elohim, Elohim Adonai. Elohim, Elohim Adonai. Have you been blessed by this video? Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and always remember to connect with us. God bless you. See you in our next video. Bye.